Have you wondered why there are individuals or children who has unique qualities or has different facial features compared to other children? It is because they are learners with special needs. Hi everyone, I'm Alvin P. Escomo, a second year BS and English student of Negros Oriental State University, Shatan Campus. For today's video, I will be discussing to you on the Unit 3 Typology of Learners with Special Needs. And I am assigned to report about learners with intellectual disability. But before going to our main topic, let us first know our objectives in this topic. At the end of the lesson, we will be able to first define intellectual disability and know its examples. Two, demonstrate the types of intellectual disabilities. And third, evaluate the importance of students with intellectual disabilities. Intellectual disability is a term used when there are limits to a person's ability to learn at an expected level and function in daily life. Levels of intellectual disability vary greatly in children. It could cause a children to learn and develop more slowly than other children of the same age. It could also take longer for a child when, with intellectual disability to learn to speak, walk, dress or eat without help, and they could have trouble learning in school. It can be caused by injury, disease, or a problem in the brain. For many children, the cause of their intellectual disability is not known. So intellectual disability preferably happens to children below 18 years old. According to the American Association of Intellectual and Developmental Abilities, an individual has intellectual disability if he or she meets the three criteria. First, IQ is below 70 to 75. Second, there are significant limitations in two or more adaptive areas. Skills that are needed to live, work, and play in the community such as communication or self-care. And last, the condition manifests itself before the age of 18. So as I've said a while ago, that intellectual disability could happen to children in their age or when below 18 years old. There are many signs of an intellectual disability. For example, a children may first sit up, crawl, or walk later than other children. Second, learn to talk later or have trouble speaking. Another, have trouble understanding on the social rules, have trouble seeing the consequences of their actions, and have trouble solving problems. And lastly, could have trouble thinking logically. So that are the signs of children who has intellectual disability. At this moment, we will now move on to the two common intellectual disability. Starting up with number one, which is cerebral palsy. So what is cerebral palsy? It is a group of disorders that affect a person's ability to move and maintain balance and posture. It is the most common motor disability in childhood. And let us always remember that cerebral means having to do with the brain. Palsy means the weakness or problems with using the muscles. It is caused by abnormal brain development or damage to the developing brain that affects a person's ability to control his or her muscles. The symptoms of cerebral palsy vary from person to person. A person with severe cerebral palsy might need to use special equipment to be able to walk or might not be able to walk at all and might not need lifelong care. A person with mild cerebral palsy, on the other hand, might walk a little awkwardly but might not need any special help. CP does not get worse over time, let us always remember that, though the exact symptoms can change over a person's lifetime. So here are the signs of cerebral palsy in a baby younger than 6 months of age. So I will just give one example of each. So the first one is his head lags when you pick him up while he's lying on his back so when you notice that your baby baby's head lags when you pick him up while he's lying on his back then probably he has cerebral palsy on the other hand in a baby older than six months of age 
he or she doesn't roll over in either direction. So as you can observe in a baby, a baby roll in any direction. But if you can observe or notice that she doesn't roll, then he or she might have a cerebral palsy condition. So in a baby older than 10 months of age, he crawls or he or she crawls in a lopsided manner, pushing off with one hand and leg while dragging the opposite hand and leg. And the other example is he scoots around on his buttocks or hops on his knees but does not crawl on all fours. Cerebral palsy is the most common motor disability in childhood. But there are a lot of variation in symptoms, complications, and degree of disability. Every child with this condition is truly an individual with unique needs, limitations, and abilities. And as teachers, we should familiarize our students. We should treat them carefully and with respect to their disability. And it is very important for us to build an, a more inclusive environment or a classroom to them. So how to make classrooms more inclusive for students with cerebral palsy? So here are the following. First is embrace technology. It is very important for us to have them technology because we know a lot that there are students who can't participate well because they don't have the ability to speak or they don't know how to speak well. So in order for them to participate, they might use technologies to write down their ideas and so that they can share it as well to the class. Another is we should make space and you let us give them enough space for them to have a comfortable environment. Another is use assigned seating. So we know a lot that every student wants to be near with their friends but as teachers we have to assign proper seating arrangement especially for those students who have this cerebral disability for them also to be comfortable in the classroom another is change up instructional methods so when we make instructional materials to our students we have to make sure that we are inclusive or we have inclusion to those individuals who has this ability we have to set visual representations to those students who have this ability or we have to take them properly. We have to care and educate them and give them the best of education. Another is provide choice, which is very important for individuals and for us teachers to provide choices to individuals with disability. Another is no tolerance for bullying. So we know a lot that bullying do really exist in a classroom. So as teachers, we have to focus on a harmonious environment for our classroom in order to live and have productive, a progressive, and to achieve excellence in our classroom. Another and last, collaborate with teachers and parents. That's the most important. We have to collaborate with our fellow teachers and as well talk to the parents of the children with special needs. Moving on to our next example of intellectual disability, we have trisomy 21 or as what we are familiar, Down syndrome. It is a chromosomal condition in which extra genetic material causes delays in, in the way a child develops both mentally and physically. Kids and teens with Down syndrome tend to share certain physical features such as flat facial feet profile, an upward slant to the eyes, small ears, and a protruding tongue. They tend to grow at a slower rate and remain shorter than their peers. Down syndrome can affect learning abilities in different ways, but it usually causes mild to moderate intellectual impairment. Children with Down syndrome have delays in speech and motor skills and may need help with self-care such as dressing and grooming. Individuals with Down syndrome are at risk for congenital heart disease, vision and hearing problem, thyroid problems, obesity, seizures, neck problems, and sleep problems. On the other hand, students with Down syndrome may need to go to school nurse for medications when necessary, miss class time due to frequent doctor visits, and need extra time and assistance with class work. That is why as teachers, when we have students with Down syndrome, we have to be very patient to them and we have to lend our most precious time to them so that we can assist them and give them education that they deserve. So how should we accommodate students with Down syndrome? So as you can see in the slides, you can just read it in your own that these are the things that we should do to accommodate our students who has Down syndrome. 
Students with Down syndrome have a range of abilities. They can learn and develop new skills throughout their lives, but reach goals at a different pace. Yes, remember to focus on the individual and learn firsthand about his or her capabilities and special needs. Students with Down syndrome are often enrolled in mainstream educating systems and enjoy participating with peers in all kinds of classroom activities. Let us encourage physical fitness and involvement in all school activities, as well as extracurricular program. Let us realize that we can make a big difference in our students' life. Learn the students' interests so we can create opportunities for success in the school. Thank you so much for watching and for listening, everyone. I hope you have learned something in my video, and I do hope that you have a great day ahead.